Um, so the coalition has come together and um, the, the items that we have on our list immediately um, is the redirection of funds um, to true women's health care centers um, around the state um, so that more women can have more access and more choices. Um, and then the other um, issue that we have before us that we're, that we're putting forward to the legislature is the Life at Conception Act. Which would say what? Life begins at conception. Okay. It would, would that actually be legislation or a constitutional amendment or what? At this point, we're exploring all options with the legislature. In terms of, so, but it would be a state law that would say that life begins at conception and that, and that abortions, all abortions would be prohibited? It would say that life begins at conception, yep, absolutely. Uh, you had indicated that there might be an omnibus bill of some sort. Um, is, are, are these initiatives potentially in that legislation, or would they be separate, separate bills? At this point, the discussion. At this point, and I don't want to talk anymore. Um, but at this, uh, at this point, I didn't mean that like that. But because um, <laughs> you all know that's not true. Um, the omnibus bill at this point is now being discussed for potentially for 2018 because we felt we, we recognized the reality of the historic moment that we're in right now and so we are moving toward the redirection of the funding as well as Life Begins at Conception um, Act and so the omnibus bill still in conversation but most likely for 2018. What would the omnibus bill be? That is a collection of, of different things that we've worked on. There's no particulars. I would say that, as we've talked about it in the past, all of us, um, <coughs> anything and everything is open for discussion. In 2018. In 2018. Um, but, uh, and 2017, frankly. Uh, but our priorities, again, like the Conception Act, redirecting women's, um, redirecting the dollars um, of biotech Which payers. is essentially defunding Planned Parenthood. Defund defunding, or not defunding so much as the redirection. Um, of organizations that are, are abortion providers. Does the coalition support the legislation that was filed by Senate, uh, excuse me, Senate Republicans on Monday? I believe, yes, absolutely. Okay. Yes, absolutely. But, but it would have the effect of defunding Planned Parenthood. Right? You're not using the word Planned Parenthood, but we're, well, that's what we're really talking about, right? We're it talking is, about abortion providers in Iowa. Yeah. And that's your question is about the largest abortion right. provider in Iowa. Right. Uh, but yes, it, it is in regards to the abortion industry here in the state of Iowa. Right. And Bill, I think what is money would go to organizations that do not provide correct for women health services. As the governor yesterday right. said in Senate File Two. Right. Right. We, we don't want to see tax dollars go to fund the abortion industry, but we do think those dollars can be used to the 213 community health centers that do provide uh, women's health services. And so, as Jennifer said, it's a redirection or a reallocation. I have a question, really more of a statement. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you uh, for doing this, and thank you for coming together. Uh, Walt Mock, the State Representative of House District 60. Um, I think all the legislators here are, are thankful for what you have done in coming together and supporting us and all the different strategies that we will have to, uh, to end abortion in our state. Um, I've talked extensively with Jennifer about this, but I would just implore all of your organizations and actually everybody in this room who is concerned about pro-life issues to work at engaging the church. Mm -hmm. um, we had a bill last year, we had the we had the issue of Planned Parenthood last year, and quite frankly, it was a dismal response from our state to all of us, I think, at least from, from my respect, uh, from people of, of pro-life persuasion. I got emails from Jennifer and Chuck a lot, but uh, that was about it, and so we need to engage the church. We really engage the church on this, and I would just implore everybody in this room to, to work at that strategy. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, could the question describe a little bit more about this life at conception uh, bill that it's going to support? That essentially is a, a, a ban on abortion. And if so, is there a concern about legal challenges or is there a strategy for how to move past that? It probably to, to best answer that is the unity that you see represented today is that we believe life begins at conception. And we believe the daughter in the mother's womb, that she's a baby. And we're gonna stand up for her. And we're gonna stand up and give that, that baby voice. So our unity you see today is not so much on strategy, it's not so much even on particular legislation, but it's that she is a baby. This is like that conception we're talking about. 
And so this historic thing that's happening today, I think we see an opportunity here. It's a new day, obviously, at the Iowa Capitol. But it's an opportunity, as, as uh, Senator Rogers just said, or Representative Rogers, excuse me, what, if I give you a little less promotion. Yeah, that's 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 okay. As, as Representative Rogers just said, you know, it, it, it's, it's just refreshing to see these groups come together. And maybe just one added note that I would offer is I think we've always been united in spirit. But there's been times where we've been differing on whatever strategy that might be. But today, make no mistake, we are united that that daughter in the mother's womb, she's a baby. Quick follow-up question on all of that. Um, have you had conversations with lawmakers in either chamber that indicates there's enough support in either chamber for the life of conception legislation? I believe we are the fourth day in the session right now, uh, but we believe this is the most pro-life legislature, uh, at least in my memory, that we have in the state of Iowa. And I think there's people here, and you, you see it with the legislators represented, they want to see something get done uh, to recognize that she's a baby. What led to this coalition being formed? Uh, because I, I know the groups didn't always work and play well together. So who, who started it? And, and <laughs> Who's to blame? Not, yeah. Well, I would say, uh, you know, give credit where credit is due. And Scott um, Valencia really stepped up to the plate and um, got together with all the different pro-life organizations and sat down and got to know everybody. And I think that was really the first step in helping us come together is we needed to get to know one another. We, we knew what different events and activities that all the groups did, but we uh, didn't know each other at a personal level. And I think that's kind of what came together. And we knew that if we came together as one, we would accomplish much, much more than we would do as individual organizations. And so we all saw that and really wanted to come together um, to make some things happen here in Iowa. And what are you guys going to do if there is a disagreement on strategy? We come to the table and we talk to each other. Every single time. We are in communication, no, no exaggeration. We are in communication multiple times every single day. And we, this coalition began the conversations just prior to the election. So frankly, we didn't know the outcome of what our nation or our state would look like. And so, as Maggie just said, um, and Bobby said as well, we just continue to have those open lines of communication. And the other unique thing about this coalition is we all need to be in unity, unanimously, to move forward on things. And that breeds a lot of conversations, that breeds a lot of engagement. And when I said in my comments earlier, no more, we meant it. We are un unified, as Maggie said in an interview um, a couple weeks back, we are stronger together. We just, we just bottom line, we are stronger together. I you think know, Shane to that to that point as well. Is I think we all recognize, and, and again, uh, Megan pointed out. I think our hats off to Scott. I don't know where Scott's at right now, but we deserve him a round of applause. He, 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 <laughs> we know that any division amongst us allows the tragedy of abortion to continue, but we know our unity and walking this journey together. Uh, we can protect that daughter in the mother's womb and really recognize that she's a baby in the state of Iowa. We'd like to see Iowa be a leader in recognizing the sanctity of human life. How much funding would that, would any legislation that you support be kind of impact all, of, all other organizations if you do kind of shifting as far as impacting our own organizations? Yeah. Or how, how, much, much, how much funding do you expect to be shifting with the legislation that's been I think it's, you want to go there? You go ahead. I, it's a combination of federal and state dollars. I think some legislators probably could speak to that probably better than I can. I think actual state dollars, the numbers I've seen thrown around is probably about $300,000. I think there's a federal, there, there's a lot more money than three hundred grand at stake that actually gets shifted to provide real women health services to the 213 community health clinics. You know, let me just say, uh, uh, just to uh, clarify or maybe make it simple, <coughs> what I was saying is that the abortion industry wants to make you think this is a woman's choice. 
and that she and a mother should control her own body. But she's doing more than that. There are two lives. If you want to talk about the conception bill or a possible constitutional amendment, there are two lives at stake here, not one. And that's scientific fact. Which is, I mean, if you, want to, if you want to go to the science of it, it is scientific fact. And also, we are here to also care about women's health post-abortion, whether it's the mother or the father. All those are pains in our society that we need to start healing. So there are two lives. It isn't one life to choose. So I just, it's a little bit simpler to put. To Senator Johnson's comments, I would point everyone's direction to Laura Lennox, who is one of the uh, signers on the coalition. Her organization, Restored by Grace, um, is a profound ministry uh, that does the work of going in and meeting with women or men um, after they've made a decision for abortion that it may be in time they regret. And so I would point anyone that has questions to that uh, and in the direction of Laura because she's got an amazing organization that helps men and women walk through those decisions. The other thing I would like to say is just to point anybody's attention if they're interested, you know, as Senator Johnson said about scientific fact, nobody's going to be surprised. We have baby models here. <laughs> and that's going to not come as any surprise. There are 12 week baby models that are wrapped here that we've given out across the state, um, over 100,000 plus in the last couple of years. Um, our tiny truth tellers, I like to call them. Those 12 week wrapped models are available for you to take today. If you'd like to take one or if you'd like to take several, <coughs> um, I'd encourage you to do that. Um, scientific fact, backing what a baby looks like at various stages in the womb. And um, the 12 week baby models, uh, again, I think are very, very gentle. Um, conversation really stops the conversation when people want to argue with you over things. You can have that baby and say, she's a baby. Here's what you look like. Here's what she looks like at 12 weeks in the world. Tiny fingers, tiny toes, you know, brain wave activity, all that stuff. You can talk about those details, but when you're looking at that 12 week baby model, she speaks for herself. On the funding issue, um, I know they get federal funding. The abortion industry does. Is there any way that that's going to change? Will they still be able to apply for that and receive that? Or is it strictly Iowa funding that we're dealing with? I believe if we accept Speaker Ryan and what he's introducing, uh, he's looking at redirecting funds to the true okay. women health services so it will and away from the abortion industry. Okay. It'll, but the two have to coalesce. So what, what Iowa legislator is doing now is directing, redirecting funds that are Iowa taxpayer <coughs> funds. But if they have a Medicare fund, federal funds that come in from Medicare or whatever, they can still apply for and receive those, is that correct? The only thing I would say that they, even if the federal resolve weakens, <coughs> uh, I think the Iowa resolve can be there. And so uh, we look forward to working with the legislature all that I will resolve. Okay, guys, um, and we can go ahead and do individual.